About 45 minutes from the city of Philadelphia, across the bridge from New Hope, Pennsylvania, lives the small, quaint town of Lambertville. The city, populating only 3,960 people, is known for its rich history, artistic atmosphere, aged architecture, and friendly faces. This small town was established in 1705, making it one of the first towns to settle in the Hunterton County area. Some would say that the town has changed little over the past 100 years. Victorian row homes still grace the streets, and the factories of yore have become the art studios, galleries, shops, and restaurants of this charming town. But apart from the delectable dining at the Lambertville Station and the interesting artwork found at the town's galleries, Lambertville holds one powerful building that attracts many people of all ages. Up on a hill, Nestled in the trees that overlook the small town lies Lambertville's first high school. In 1854, the city of Lambertville erected its first high school, up on a steep hill that overlooked the town. The school was small for a high school, with only three floors and ten classrooms, but it served as the town's secondary schooling facility for a little over 100 years. The red-bricked building was home to hundreds of students from the year that it was erected to the year 1959, when it was closed down due to the inability to inhabit the growing population. The school on the hill was where Lambertville's youth attended schooling and played sports against neighboring schools such as the New Hope Buckeyes. In 1926, the school experienced a fire that left most of the building damaged. Unfortunately, the story as to why the fire occurred is unknown, but it was said to have happened overnight and that nobody was hurt. The school was remodeled a year later, in 1927, and its doors opened once again for adolescents to attend their daily classes. For years, the school was profitable. Up to the 1940s, the class sizes were small, each graduating class never exceeding more than 100 students. When the town grew, however, and more prospective students began to flock to the school, the small and outdated building could not handle the growing population. In 1959, the last graduating class of Lambertville High School left the school for good, and the rest of the students were moved to a larger facility. The building was no longer used as a school in the following years. For a few years after, the school was used to sell electronics, and it was also kept as a small museum of sorts. In the year of 1991, a second fire lit up the high school once more and devastated the building once and for all. The second fire was said to be started by vandals who broke into the school at night to set the fire for fun. The roof of the school collapsed into the center of the building, breaking through the third and second floors. Although the front of the school remained intact, there was no roof and the amount of damage done was too great to rebuild. The school was boarded up and deemed too hazardous to occupy or remodel. The building has remained in a state of unoccupied decay for 19 years, and has become a growing garbage dump where members of the town will dispose of any unwanted furniture and trash. It is unfortunate that such a sad ending happened to a building that was once a place of happiness and opportunity. If anything, a building that was home to so many students should have received a proper ending where the school could be put to rest once and for all. When driving or walking up the unkempt drive to the school, a pair of steep steps that climb up to the school's entrance comes to view. The steps are littered with graffiti, each step spelling out the words, avoid. The steps are dangerous to climb, and one has to watch their step when ascending the stairs. Once you make it past the stairs, you are confronted with an aged and graffitied memorial stone that had been dedicated to the school by the class of 1937. The stone is spooky, resembling a stone that is placed over a grave. It is said that the shape of the memorial stone foreshadowed the school's terrible, impending demise. At the head of the stone is the school's crest, and below reveals the date that it was erected and the date it was remodeled. 
and graffitied over the crest were the letters R.I.P., and written in blue graffiti were the words burned down in 1992. The school had two main entrances, one on either side of the building. Neither entrances have doors, and each lead into a small stairway that leads to the second and third floors. In the hallway of the second floor, there are entrances to four classrooms, two of which are now combined into one. Although the classrooms that look out over the town are destroyed, it seems that neither of these classrooms were affected by the fire. Their destruction was most likely due to the vandals. The wall that had separated them has been knocked down, most likely from the vandals as well. A room that had been the library was also on the second floor. The broken down bookshelves found on the floor contribute to the idea of the library. In the last room on the second floor, a counter, oven, and refrigerator were found, showing that this room was most likely a home ec room or a kitchen. In the center of the hallway, where the rest of the hallway would have continued, shows the third floor and the roof destruction. The destruction buries the hall and whatever other rooms had been down the center of the building. When you climb to the third floor, you see four more classrooms, all open to the sky and populated by trees, rubble, and graffiti. Not much is known about these rooms because there aren't any artifacts to be found that would state what they had once been. There are two smaller rooms that can be labeled as bathrooms because a tub was found in one and the top of a toilet in another. The reality of knowing that people once thrived here and that it had been a much nicer place attracts many artists, photographers, and young explorers to the site. Upon each visit that I made to the school, I met many other adolescents that were my age that came to the school for similar reasons, and each had something different to say about the school. I've always had a deep interest in things that are creepy, things that are weird, and things that people usually pass by every day, unexpected. And so it takes that one person who has enough, I guess, is foolish enough and has enough curiosity to stumble upon something like Lambertville and really see it for what it's worth inside and outside. I don't know. Like, there's just something about, like, the exhilaration of going somewhere that's not, like, lived in anymore. Like, it's exciting to be somewhere and know that you're not supposed to be here, but at the same time, like, there's just so much to look at and you can tell that so much happened and it's just interesting to see because it's clearly forgotten. And I also think it's kind of weird that they would just let it sit here and wouldn't either rebuild it or take it down altogether, although it's beneficial for people who come to take pictures, but I think with the graffiti and everything, it just kind of gives it a story, it's more to look at. Oh, really? Yeah, that's weird. Cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's really warm up here and nice. It's still doing it. I'm actually, I, I guess I could say I'm attracted to like the whole abandoned type of uh, art and how it views and just the whole point of the abandoned high school is like just the feel of it. It's very artistic enough. How people were with people. Oh, yes. I think it's a really cool location. I don't know if the kids walked here since it's yeah. up on a hill or buses came up here. Yeah. I don't know about that, but I really like it. Uh, the graffiti is a cool touch to it. it gives it more photogenic yes. looks, yeah. I guess you can say. <laughs> But so far, it's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just the background of it. The whole background, as soon as I heard of it, burning down twice. First time people dying and everything. And just being here is ridiculous. And it's a pretty cool experience, I think. When I asked my fellow explorers if Lambertville had been all they thought it would be, I got all positive responses. Every one of my interviews agreed that Lambertville was amazing and that they were so glad that they had the experience to visit the place. But when I asked if there was anything that they had wanted to see but could not find, I was surprised to find that there had been one piece that attracted the attention of a lot of visitors. Kevin Anderson explains. I hear, I hear tell of 
in the school and I've never actually seen it myself, but there's this blackboard and on the blackboard, it's almost like a mirror of what once was in the school. There are children that you see learning and on the other, and on the other side of the blackboard, there are children reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, that seems normal, but what I've heard and what really stuck with me is very eerie that there's this one girl clutching her heart with both her hands, almost as if she was in a coffin, which is unusual. That at the time, almost like the school was foreshadowing the demise that could have happened to this day. As you can see, we're in the second corridor, up on the second floor of the school, and looks as if there was a blackboard here at one point. You see where a chalk ledge must have been, plenty of space outside of it were desks of students awaiting learning. You see exactly right where the board could have been. And now somewhat, it, it is a board, but of a modern kind of art. When I met one young man by the name of Colin, I found his answers pretty enlightening. He was very enthusiastic about the architecture, and he was eager to explore the building's rooms. I followed him around the school, and he gave me his insight on different rooms and objects that he thought were important to recognize. This is the, definitely a, a, a shower room, because if you look at all the tiles, the only reason they have this kind of backing was because of yeah, the bathroom. This is probably shower heads, probably multiple shower heads off this line. And if you look up top here, there's probably more here. Because then there's distributor pipe. That's hot water heater. That's not hot water heaters, but they're radiators, so hot water went through them. Yeah, this is definitely a bathroom. Or a locker room. Because you see all the distributor pipes down here. Mm -hmm. Old walls. If you look here, this is the this is the chain that held the um, light fixture on it, and then these two wires were what powered it. Which is incredible. Look at the old bench. Has a move. Yeah, this, you know what? Sitting here, this is probably, probably a wall with sinks on it. And the wall behind it was showers. And this is just a waiting room. And that's why the lockers were here and here. And this is probably a bathroom because of this wall. Yeah. It's a power breaker. It's one of the, uh, probably one of the power breakers for the, uh, the top floor. Probably one on each floor, because there is one on the first floor, I do know. Um, I didn't see one on the second floor, but I assume this is where all the main cables are run up and through, and then uh, distributed over the rest of the power grid. It was intriguing to look around the building and try to establish a clear view of what the school had looked like before the fire. We made guesses about which rooms were there and where they had been located. We knew that there had to be a small gymnasium in the school because we found a locker room on the third floor, cut off from the rest of the school by a large hole at the center of the building. Getting to the locker room itself required us to cross over a gaping hole in the floor that dropped 20 feet to the second floor. We had to be extremely careful when crossing the hole, but when we made it to the room, we found lockers, tiles, pipes leading to showers, and toilets. Colin had a clear view of what went where when he examined the rubble. After speaking to an alumnus of the school named Betty of the class of 1948, I was told that the gymnasium had indeed been on the third floor, and that the gym had had many purposes. The room was used for proms and dances that were held there, and it also had a theater, a small stage being located on the side of the playing court. Betty also described that the area in which most of the damage had been done had once been a science lab, and that the school did not have a cafeteria. Students were given an hour for lunch where they would go wherever they pleased. It was at this time that I interviewed Nick. Nick Monteverdi was born in Lambertville in 1930, and he has lived in his birthplace all 88 years of his life. Nick was a graduate of Lambertville High School's class of 1949, 
Finally, I had found some answers that no one on the internet could confirm before. Nick confirmed that there had indeed been a football field above the school, where he and other football players would play the game against other schools in the area. Nick had been thrilled to talk about his time as a football player and a student at the high school. Uh, it was, um, uh, let's see, the school set there and you had to go up a pair of steps and it was a cinder football team, <laughs> football field. <laughs> when I say cinder football field, just watch out when you get hit because you're all in a bunch of cinder, the whole, the whole thing was cinders. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got beat up some fierce on that point when you hit the ground. <laughs> Remember that? Do you remember that climbing up? Yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. up there. Oh God, what a bad. And on the top of the hill was Wagner's Orchard, an apple orchard. Right? <laughs> Above that was another. It was like plateaus, you know. You kept. Uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, you would have to go up the steps to get to the football field, and then you would have to go up a little hill to get to the uh, the, or the apple orchard. <laughs> Everything seemed to be insane, you know, going up higher all the time. After seeing him so excited to talk about his past experiences at Lambertville High School and how much he enjoyed his time as a student, I asked if he was sad knowing that the place that he appreciated so much and had such fond memories of was now reduced to rubble and trash. If it had been up to Nick, he stated that he would want the school to be taken down and a small stone to be placed over the spot, marking, here marks the place where Nick Monteverdi had the greatest time of his life. Many think that the school is on its way to being completely destroyed. Some agree that the school won't last another 10 years in the condition that it is in right now. There is no telling when the school will be gone once and for all. But until the day it does, the school will remain an attraction to many. Even though it is no longer a school, memories and stories of what it once was will circulate its hallways until the day that it is truly gone once and for all.